So for those of you who don't know, this is a PC12 Slant 47E, otherwise known as the Next Gen. It's got the Honeywell Primus Apex system. And uh, what's kind of neat, it's got an overhead, you know, very fancy, cool looking overhead, but you actually don't touch almost any of this. Um, these five switches, generators one and two, avionics two and one, and the cabin bus, those are totally automatic. Uh, they'll turn on and off whenever it determines that it's safe to do so. Same thing goes for our environmental system. Uh, the air cycle system, heating, cooling, fans, uh, the cabin pressurization system. Uh, it's all automatic. All these switches just stay in auto except for flood fan. That's just a loud fan in the back. We usually inhibit that because it's, it's just noisy. So to get this thing started, what we first have to do is bring the uh, standby bus on. And what that does is it powers this lower display unit here. Um, and it'll give us uh, the ability to input our flight plan, uh, get the radios. So you have to turn the standby bus on, and then you have to wait for the GPS to come alive and the terrain. So once you see the terrain, the standby bus has been on for long enough. Now we can come up here to the battery. We go bat one on and bat two on. And what that'll do is it'll bring on uh, the, the pilot's display unit. Uh, these two display units uh, will not ever turn on when you're on battery power. You have to be either on GPU or the engine uh, for those to come on. Um, you have to have the whole electrical system up and running. Uh, so as this boots up here, you'll see there's the uh, pilot's PFD coming alive. There's our cast crew alert system showing us. Uh, the blues are status indicators, whites are information, uh, yellows are uh, cautions and reds are warnings. So we just reset, master caution, master warning right there, and uh, it takes away the colored bar, and that's our acknowledgement. So we are totally cold and dark at the moment. So just like yesterday, first thing we do is we come up to the standby bus, click that on. I'll power up the lower DU. Alrighty. So the lower DU is powering up. We got a GPS location and there's our terrain. Um, but we don't really need to bring the battery on quite yet. You'll notice the uh, these yellow indicators here will whiten up once it's uh, got our position and heading done correctly. This is our navigation screen. Uh, we can also swap it over to the systems display screen, but with the standby bus, just the standby bus, none of this will display proper. You need to have the full batteries on for that to work. Um, so with the standby going, you can see now all the Texas White has figured out where our origin is, and uh, uh, we have a list of stored flight plans here, some saved ones. We don't need many of these. Um, if you wanted to use a stored flight plan, uh, what you would do is select it. Like, let's do Lebanon to Baltimore. And uh, you would just hit insert. But I don't really want to do that, I just want to delete it. So all I do is I go up here and hit delete. Um, this little cursor control unit down here is how I'm doing that. This is like a mouse. You move that and it moves a little mouse around. This is a scroll wheel up and down. So if I put that, for example, over the map, I can scroll in and out. And then this is like your left click on a mouse right here on the left side and on the right side this one will just swap the screen so when you have multiple du's up you can just hit this to swap between them uh, in order to get uh, different systems pages up you can click this left like that so if i go over here for example and click this i can pull up different uh, menus here so i can have just the waypoint uh, the performance calculator or the radios and this is actually where we're going to get our ifr so our audio control panel is up here. Um, here's your speaker PA button. If this is on, speaker's on. Off, speaker off, PA. When you transmit, you'll just transmit to the cabin. I usually leave that off. Uh, there's your ICS. You can isolate yourself, all crew. Um, there's a headset jack in the back, so if you hit all, you can talk to someone sitting in the back. Crew is just the two guys up front. And then this here up top is transmit. So uh, this aircraft's only equipped with two radios, but some PC-12s you can get up to five, ridiculous. Uh, the arrow on top designates who's speaking on what side. So when you have everything up and running, there's actually both arrows are illuminated. And if both arrows are illuminated like this, that means both guys are talking on COM1. You can split it so that one guy's talking on COM1 and the other guy's talking on COM2. So if the uh, right-seater wanted to talk on COM2, on his side, 
he would hit COM2 up here and it would show one arrow, the left side arrow on my side, because I'm still on COM1, and he'd have the right arrow illuminated over here on COM2. Uh, whatever display panel is in front of you, here's how you listen to it. So if I'm if, if it's on my side and this is hit, I'm listening to COM1, I'm not listening to COM2. If this guy's over here had both illuminated, he's listening to both, and he can each guy on each side can choose whichever he's listening to. Uh, here's your volume for the, uh, the intercom system and your marker sensitivity, and then down here is your traditional, you know, listening to your navs, ADFs, your marker beacon, all that. So I'm going to pull up our handy-dandy flight plan go, and we're at Sanford Regional, and clearance is on 121725. So uh, come I over here. And I go down to COM2. When the standby bus is on, only COM2 works. And uh, I just go down and type. All I need to type is 2172. 2172. And then I hit enter. And it loads the frequency in there. And then I just hit enter again. And it swaps it. So now I'm on 21725. Uh, I can come up here. Since we only have COM2, I need to transmit on COM2. So I hit that. Now I'm transmitting on COM2 and listening to COM2. So we got our clearance and uh, the original file, the one we had was up at 16,000. The routing they gave us was take us all the way to Albany and then south. I uh, said so if we could go down to 10,000, they'd give us a better routing, more direct. So that's what I got. So our new routing is down here. Gardner, Victor 229 to Hartford, Victor 1, Madison, Victor 475, Bridgeport, Bridgeport 288, Radio the Rhymes. Climb 3,000, expect 10,000, departure 19, decimal 75, squawking 7 tree, tree 2. So here's how we're going to input that into our uh, computer here. Uh, we take our cursor down, select the performance planner here. So our origin is SFM, our arrival airport is Hotel Papa November, HPN, and our alternate is Tita Bra. All right, so then we hit insert. And what that does is it puts the des departure airport, the arrival airport, and the alternate flight plan all into the system here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start listing waypoints. Uh, so first is Gardner. So we type in Gulf Delta Mike, and then we hit enter. Boom, added. Now after Gardner, what we do is we go over here and we hit join, and that pulls up a little menu here. We can join an airway from Gardner, an HPN arrival, or an SFM departure. Neither of these will work because there's no nothing there that goes to Garner, but airway will work. We were cleared uh, for Victor 299. So we go through this list here, there it is. And that's to Hartford. So you can search it by name like this, if you know the name of like the VORs, or you can search it by identifier if you only know the uh, identifier. We know it's Hartford, so we hit insert. Then it just joins up the next airway here. From Hartford, we're taking the Victor 1 to Madison. So we scroll, I'm using that little scroll thing down here to scroll down to Madison. All right, there's Madison, insert. And then from Madison, we're doing the Victor 475 to Bridgeport. So we hit that, there's Bridgeport right up top, insert it. And then we're off airways at that point. So I can close the join airway menu. And after Bridgeport, we're going to rhyme. So that's Romeo, Yankee, Mike, Echo, Sierra, enter, boom. And then after rhymes, direct the field. So at this point, we hit activate, and the flight plan's now loaded. You can see it automatically pops up our altitude speed page. These values are generated automatically. I'll leave those where they are. Our initial cruise altitude will be 10,000 feet, and that's where we're gonna stay. You hit enter, and then it goes over to fuel weight. Uh, 6,700 pounds is the empty weight of the plane. The fuel on board, we have 1606. Uh, we have three passengers. The way that works is, uh, the because this is a single pilot airplane, the first officer is technically considered a passenger for performance purposes. So you put three passengers in here, and uh, we'll just round up to like 185. And cargo, these guys didn't have any bags when they came, just backpacks. So our total weight all in the back was 80 pounds. Calculates a gross weight for you, and then you hit compute. And what it does, now it's computing, it'll say computing data. There it is. It's generating all the values for time, distance, uh, fuel, uh, for the whole route. It also calculates these right here. This is top of descent, and it'll calculate a top of climb after our departure here. So that's all the performance stuff done. What we do is then we go over to the departure, the little takeoff plane. Uh, there's no SID today, so we don't need to do this. If there was, you could do, you know, like we would be departing 1-4, and you could have a SID here. 
uh, but we don't need to. Um, but what we will do is uh, send these uh, speeds. And what that does is it sends the V speeds to the PFD, which is not quite up yet. Uh, so that they're bugged. And then for the landing, we don't have anything to do with it yet. They might give us an approach, probably three, four today. Um, we would do the same thing where you send the speeds, but we usually wait until we're doing the approach briefing and we have the approach loaded up to go to this page. So then we go back to radios or waypoint, and you can see just a big list of waypoints uh, for this route. And that is how you preload and program the uh, Honeywell Primus Apex on a Pilatus PC1247E. So here's our engine primary instruments here. What we're looking for when we hit the starter is an NG rotation and the oil pressure coming off the bottom. When it's above 13% and the temperature is below 150, we come down to the condition lever here and put it into ground idle. And uh, our other hand is up here with the engine start, just waiting to interrupt before we introduce gas. Once we introduce gas, we get off the interrupt because the only way to stop it's down here with the gas. Beacon on. Clear left, center, right. So there's 13, but we're still waiting on that temperature. That's good, so we come down here, grab it. There's light off. Started up engine. These are all going to come alive here in a second. Set the flaps down to 15. We're on our way.